Great coaches are in finally. What about the talent? Can coach get these specific kids to push and beat a Clemson or an eight and four Texas A&M team? Well, Texas A&M was eight and four last year. So let's just go there um, for clarity. Can they? Yes. Will they? That remains to be seen. But there's definitely chinks in the armor. And I know that Clemson with smoke and mirrors got to 10 wins because good God. But I mean, they still had a loaded roster compared to other people, you know, other teams that they're playing. And again, it doesn't have to be every play, but DJ Uyunglele is not the generational or transformational upgrade from what they've had at quarterback. He's a clear step back, but he was still a baseball player who could throw it up to 94. He's still six foot four, 250. You know, so when everything comes together and it's and I would watch those games like it is not consistent with him. But when the footwork is there and the protection is there and that everything comes together and it's accurate and on time. Hey, man, it can be obviously it got them to 10 wins, but they're not. This is not 2015, right, with the disparity or the difference between Miami and Clemson. Like it was that that was fifty eight to nothing if you if you don't remember, or even seventeen, which was thirty five to three in the ACC championship game and should have been closer to that, but limited quarterback missed two open shots, don't score touchdowns, gets all away from us, whatever. The difference between these programs is not what it once was, so they definitely can be got. Texas A and M can get got. I mean, both of those games are going to be on the road this year. So, I mean, it's a matter of if they will, not if they can. They very much can. But, yeah, you know, and I think I think that Miami gets one of those. I don't think that they lose both. I don't know which, but I don't know how. And I don't feel very strongly on that conviction. That's just like a today sitting here gut feeling kind of a thing. But we're not, they're not in a different stratosphere in terms of operations, in terms of roster, in terms of – because there was a time, hard as it was to say, those teams were in a different strata of college football than Miami. That is no longer the case. I expect uh, Clemson is going to field one of the three to five best defenses in the country, but their offensive line has never been at the level that every other unit, even at their best, even yeah. – 2015 through 19, when they were making national championship games, the offensive line was never the unit, the elite unit that the other units were on both sides of the ball. And it, and it's at one of its worst ebbs right now. The offensive line was awful last year that the, the combination of DJ not being not even a good quarterback most of the time last year, he threw nine touchdowns and 10 picks in a league mm -hmm. where you've got, Tyler Van Dyke and Devin Leary at NC State and Sam Howell and uh, Sam Hartman at Wake. Guys throwing 35, 40 touchdown passes. Um, Pickett, the player of the year in the conference. Kenny Pickett. Yeah. You know, like. You had great quarter. It was the best quarterback play in any conference in the country. And DJ Oyangalele was atro atrocious. But again, the offensive line contributed to that. And the wide receiver play that is usually stellar at Clemson was not good either. But see, and the thing that I've said about DJ is he has to see him high school open. If he's not seeing full bodies, both numbers, you know, the eight and the zero, if he's not seeing the every, and that's in the window already. He's not throwing that ball, you know, like he, it, they need to be high school wide open. We talked about this before. The higher up you go, the smaller the window is for open. You know, I see a full body that's high school. I see half of a man, maybe that's college. In the NFL, if I see the tip of a pinky, that's open throw it you know and it's funny i was uh i was talking with my boy fred uh fred purdue we used to host a podcast together uh we were watching one of the uh game flipping around one saturday and uh you know he's a quarterback guy play quarterback coach quarterbacks things like that uh, and we were talking about dj and we we're watching clemson game and he threw one really bad pass behind somebody and he was like oh it's gonna be two three passes before he gets intercepted because Every like nothing is coming together. It's not even the pressure, but he's you can just tell everything is off. 
literally next pass, three steps behind the guy, tries to reach back, tipped up, intercepted, boom. And we're on the phone, he's screaming, Cam, Cam. I'm like, Fred, I hear you, Fred, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. I hear you. He's like, Cam. I'm like, oh, I can call it. like literally the play before I called it. And if we can do that from here, you know, that speaks to like obviously how clear the issues are. And to you know, Mark's point, nine touchdowns and ten interceptions in the league that had multiple, multiple, multiple guys with, you know, two and a half to four to one uh touchdown to interception ratios. That's not great. Really not. Devin Leary, seven to one. Thirty five to five. Come on. Come on. You know, Pickett hadn't thrown an interception in forever until, you know, we got one at the end of the game with James Williams to win that game. You know what I mean? Like, so I say all that to say that Clemson can be got because of, well, not necessarily entirely because of, but that's a factor towards why they can get got. Now, are we the ones to, to get them? We'll see. 